So in today's web dev tip, we're going to take a look at a JavaScript build tool called Parcel, and I'm going to show you a couple of things that you can use it for when you're developing your websites or applications. So uh, we've got a basic project structure set up here, and uh, we've got a source folder with some assets, and there are some JavaScript and a single HTML file in there. And what we're going to be doing is using a build tool called Parcel to take the content that we've got in our source directory and build a kind of distributable or finished product which would be able to be uploaded to a server somewhere. So let's first of all install the parcel tool. Uh, so I'm going to use the npm install command and because it's not used for the actual running of the application once it's finished, we can save it as a dev dependency. So we just put in dash dash save dash dev or you can use a dash and a capital D and the package is just called parcel. Now it's going to take a little bit of time to complete so I'm just going to leave that running whilst it goes away and installs all the necessary files. Uh, but let's just put a bit of content on our page just so we've got something to look at uh, when we're ready to bundle our files. Uh, so let's just say uh, welcome to parcel for example and we'll also include the JavaScript uh, files that we've got here in the index.js file and because we're using uh, ES6 modules in there uh, we just need to make sure we've got the type in there set to module. Uh, so we'll save that and just let parcel finish doing its installation process. And when it's finished, if we go and look at our package.json file, you should see that we've got a development dependency in there for parcel. Uh, and that means we can, inside our package.json file, actually reference the parcel command so we can use its features uh, to work with the files that we've got. So what I'm going to do in the script section here, I'm just going to set up a new script called serve. Uh, so this is the first thing you might use parcel for just while you're working on your project locally. So we'll just say parcel serve and you just need to specify where you want to serve your files from. So I'm just going to put the entry point as the index.html file that we were working on a moment ago. And once that script's set up, all you can do is just say npm run serve, which will run that script that we've just created. And you can see parcel is up and running and we've got a local server set up on uh, port 1234, which if we load up, you can see we've got that HTML uh, content that we put in the index file a moment ago. So one thing that you do get with parcel is you get a live reload service. So if we were to make some changes to this index.file or, or any of the other dependent files, such as the uh, JavaScript files, you can see it reloads in the browser. But one of the most important features of parcel is it does automatic bundling of all your assets that don't necessarily normally run in the browser. So to give you an example of that, uh, SCSS or SAS is a prime example because you would use that within your development environment, but ultimately it gets compiled down into CSS. So let's just create a simple SCSS file uh, within our project here. So I'll just call it index.scss and we'll just put something in here uh, so you can use things like nesting of CSS selectors, which you wouldn't normally be able to do within CSS directly. We could set the color here to green. So to get this working, what we can do is in the index.html file, uh, instead of having to reference the compiled uh, CSS once a, a processor has gone through that SAS file to uh, compile it into CSS, we can literally just reference it directly here. Let's just close down the editor there. And if I just reference index.scss, as soon as I hit save, you'll see on the command line that parcel will actually automatically identify this file as an SCSS file, a SAS file, and it will go away and install the necessary packages that we need to compile the SAS file. So if we go back to our package.json file and scroll down here to our dev dependencies, you can see it's gone away and automatically installed this package for transforming SAS into CSS. So we can't see that rule being applied, but that's simply because we haven't put a span inside of our h1 tag. So if we go back into the index.html file, and if we just put a span inside of here and just wrap this last bit of text in a span, you can see that when we save that, now that we've got SAS installed, you can see that uh, the SAS is being parsed into a browser readable format, which is actually CSS. So this is different from using other build tools because you would need to put in appropriate steps and loaders uh, to uh, convert the SAS into CSS. So what Parcel is doing here is just automatically converting that for us. 
So there are loads of other technologies that Parcel supports, including things like TypeScript. So for example, if you wanted to use TypeScript code in your project, you literally just put uh, the files in as .ts for TypeScript, and Parcel will recognize that and go away and install the appropriate loader. So one thing just to mention when you are, do start using Parcel uh, is it will create a few new folders within your project, uh, namely the distribution folder, which is where everything gets compiled down to and run in the browser, and also the Parcel cache folder. And you might not necessarily want to track those in your Git repository. So if you want to stop doing that, literally all we need to do is go down to the git ignore file and then just put those folder names inside of this file. So we'll put in the parcel cache and also the dist folder. It's up to you whether you want to include that in your repository, but ideally you wouldn't and hit save. And then you can see they're no longer being tracked by git within this project. So there you go, there's just a quick introduction to Parcel and how you can use it within your projects to uh, include things like SCSS and TypeScript. Make sure you stay tuned for more web dev tips.